Ah, elites, welcome back to another Snapshot Showcase video. Yours truly, Waddles here. Uh, they did it. Mojang actually did it. There is a brand new mob in Minecraft, and this is one of the most adorable yet disturbing mobs that they have added into Minecraft in, like, a long, long time. Honestly, maybe since the Enderman. Look at this thing. These things are adorably disturbing. Uh, oh, oh boy, this snapshot is, this is a big one. Anyways, hope you're doing well, hope you're doing healthy today. Welcome to the 20W13A snapshot. This afternoon, on March 25th, 2020, Mojang dropped this big one on us. Today, we're going to break down this snapshot, check everything out. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy these videos from me, let me know by dropping a like. And uh, remember to subscribe, tap that notification bell, so you get notified as soon as these videos come out on Snapshot Day. These days are always so, so fun. Alright, so this week's snapshot is a very, very big snapshot, and it's a snapshot that I am crazy, crazy excited about. This time around, we have received a brand new block, a brand new mob, and then some changes to some other things that have been in the game for a while, and uh, also for not as long. Let's go ahead and start with the star of last week's show, the Respawn Anchor. So, this is the Respawn Anchor. In last week's snapshot, if you wanted to charge this thing up, you had to do it manually by hand with glowstone. Now, dispensers can take care of that job for you. So, dispenser with glowstone facing the Respawn Anchor button right here. We power that and boom, we have one charge. Another one, another one, and finally, one final charge. So, we have a fully charged Respawn Anchor. If we check inside of the dispenser the glowstone was actually used up as well that is definitely different than last week glowstone is now consumed when charging a respawn anchor this is good i it, it's unfortunate but i feel like this only makes sense everything else uh, to do with the respawn anchor should be identical Next up, let's rewind things back a few more weeks, back to the Soul Speed week. Soul Speed is Minecraft's newest enchantment. It's really, really cool, but it's also very hard to get. This week, that has been made a little bit easier. Piglin should now sell you a Soul Speed books and Soul Speed boots a little bit more often when you barter with them. Uh, I'm not sure if selling is the right term, by the way, but yeah, it should be a little bit more common. Now, unfortunately, I've done this many barters so far, and um, no Soul speed still these ones uh yeah i gave myself those but uh i guess it's been increased but it looks like it's still going to be pretty rare so uh don't get your hopes too high going through a few more barters to finish off this chest will we get any soul speed come on i'm depending on you uh no we will not so yep it still looks to be pretty rare uh huh Next up, we actually have something that is really, really cool. Basalt generators are now possible as of the 20W13A snapshot. In the snapshot, basalt got a new, uh, I guess, formation method. To form basalt, you're going to need a handful of things. You'll need some blue ice, so very, very expensive. You'll need a lava bucket, and you'll need soul soil. Now, soul soil should be the easiest thing to get out of all those, maybe other than the lava bucket. If you're looking for soul soil, head over to the nearest soul sand valley biome and look at the ground. This stuff is literally everywhere over there. Now, to form basalt, start by placing a lava bucket down. Now, anywhere on top of that soul soil, next to or in the flowing lava, place a block of blue ice and boom, basalt has been formed. Now, we can go ahead and mine this basalt out. If we're quick, we'll grab it. Uh, hopefully, it won't fall into the lava. But, uh, yep, basalt generators are now possible, which is amazing because this block is going to be great for building. A better way to build a basalt generator, at least better than what I had built over there, would be like this. So I have four blocks dug out in the ground. We'll go ahead and dig out over here, like that, so we have that area that goes down low. Right here, we'll place the soul soil. Over here, lava bucket. The lava bucket will flow this way, and then down over there. Right here, blue ice. Then we can go ahead and dig down right here, and just continuously dig this out. But be very, very careful, because lava is dangerous. 
Okay, take a look at this block right here. The texture is really, really good, just like every single other Nether update texture up until this point. Jaffa is like carrying here. Well, maybe not carrying. All of the features are really cool too, but the textures are amazing. This thing is known as a lodestone. The lodestone is a brand new, I, I guess, interactable block being introduced into Minecraft. Now this block is very, very expensive. To craft this thing, you will need one netherite ingot and eight chiseled stone bricks. Obviously, the chiseled stone bricks are not a big deal. The netherite ingot, though, ooh, that is going to be expensive. Place it in the crafting table just like this, and boom, there you go, one lodestone. Now, the lodestone is meant to be used with compasses, so go ahead and craft up a compass, then use a compass on the lodestone, and your compass will then look enchanted. Now, be careful. Currently, if you use a stack of compasses on the lodestone, that stack is consumed. I'm sure that's just a bug right now shouldn't necessarily work that way but yeah that is how it works now take a look at these compasses they are pointing right over to that lodestone that is exactly what the lodestone does if we move over here they're now pointing that way over to the lodestone so now basically you can have a compass that points to anything that you needed to in your world now let's say you have more than one lodestone in your world. Well, that definitely wouldn't be a big deal. You can have more than one lodestone and you can have different compasses pointing at each lodestone or you can just reuse the same compass on a brand new lodestone to, I guess, reconfigure the compass. The lodestone is mined with the pickaxe. If you mine it uh, and you have a compass synced up to it, it is going to go crazy. Um, <laughs> pretty funny looking. When you place it back down, you'll have to reuse your compass on the lodestone to resync things up. Now, this one is actually pretty big. I think it is going to be most useful on servers. Imagine having a lodestone at your friend's base. You can walk over there, use a compass on that lodestone, then name the compass, whatever your friend's name is, and then go back to your base. Whenever you need to go over to your base, you can easily just use that compass, and it will lead you right over to your friend's base. If you're a fan of building outposts in your world, but you don't like maps, the lodestone is also going to be pretty useful for you. If your compasses are synced up to a lodestone that is in a different dimension than you, they're going to go crazy. You can use the lodestone in the overworld, which is really, really cool too. This block is great. I love this. This is awesome. Definitely a great way to keep track of things in the nether, considering the fact that maps don't really work in the nether. Oh man, it leads to the moment you have all been waiting for, and I've been waiting for this too. Take a look at the brand new Strider mob. This thing looks straight out of like one of those scary stories to tell in the dark book, right? I mean, I don't know, at least that's the first vibe that I got when I saw this thing. Now obviously, the Strider is going to be a brand new nether mob. Take a look at this lava ocean. All of those Striders that are out there are naturally spawned Striders. I did not spawn any of those in. I walked over to the ocean and they all spawned. Now these creatures are the new way to travel across the nether, at least when it comes to lava oceans. So first off, the drops. The striders seem to drop string, which I assume is their hair. So they drop their hair when you take them out and a little bit of experience. That's it. Now you can actually use a saddle on a strider to saddle it up and then you can actually sit right up on top of that strider. But uh, you can't control it. I, I'm trying to walk around right now. Nothing is working. It's sort of like a saddled pig. In fact, it is just like a saddled pig because you can control the strider with a warped fungus on a stick. So to craft this thing, you'll need a fishing rod and a warped fungus. Slide over to the crafting table, fishing rod in the center, or fishing rod in the side, doesn't matter, so long as the warped fungus is directly, diagonally below the hook part. Go ahead and do that, and boom, you have a warped fungus on a stick. This is what the item looks like. Now, if we go ahead and walk up to a strider with a saddle on it, get on top of it, and hold this warped fungus on a stick, we are actually controlling where the strider is walking now, which is is crazy cool i love this uh the view like bobbling i'm really really excited about this thing now you already know where we're going we're going straight for the lava ocean over here to cruise across the lava with our brand new strider friend look at this creature it is running in the lava this is so so cool this is the new way to travel across the nether elites this is so so amazing now if you are holding a warped fungus on a stick as you can see the other striders will be interested as well now you can still take fire damage while you're on a strider so be very careful don't walk through the lava fall uh you're gonna burn the strider though the strider will be good which is which is great 
Now, if we aren't holding the warped fungus, that is fine. So we could sit here maybe with a bow and take out gas that are bothering us, maybe just take out random piglins, whatever we're trying to do. You don't need to be holding the stick. The stick is only for movement. So whenever you want to travel somewhere, you'll need to have one of these things. This is perfectly done. Honestly, I like this way more than any Lava Strider enchantment, anything like that. This is amazing. Way better than a Netherite boat. Way better than any of that stuff. This is awesome, and it definitely promotes interacting with the creatures that live in the Nether. Now, you can actually walk right out of the lava with your Strider as well. But as you probably would have expected, you'll need a clean way to walk up. So, if we go ahead and walk over here, ignoring the terrifying Nether sounds, boom, we can walk up. The movement speed is actually a little bit faster in the lava, as you can kind of tell here. I, it speeds up in the lava. It likes to walk in the lava. But at least this creature right here is definitely the biggest thing in this week's snapshot, and I'm so happy. I, I just love this thing. The texture is creepy, but it's great. And the Strider is confirmed to definitely be my new best friend. Sorry, Pam. If for some reason you need your saddle back, you will unfortunately have to kill the Strider to get it back. And our final change of this snapshot can be found over here in the overworld. In the 20W13A snapshot, uh, villagers got a whole lot more smart, at least farmer villagers. Farmer villagers can now actually use composters. They can compost extra seeds inside of the composter. Eventually, the composter will fill up and the villager will actually get bone meal. Villagers, or farmer villagers, now know how to use bone meal. So, let's go ahead and try this out. Here you go, good sir. That bone meal is for you. And, um, instead of replanting, do you feel like bone mealing anything? Uh, okay, we're gonna focus here, villager. We're gonna focus. Okay, so the villager is now trying to replant. Hold on, hold on. We're just gonna go ahead and replant for the villager. So, you can show off your fancy new trick. Go ahead, uh, do the thing. Um, uh, okay, we'll give you some space. Uh, right there, you can see the villager is walking around. Okay, all right. Uh, and bone mealing right there that villager is absolutely bone mealing those crops this is actually kind of amazing when it comes to villager powered automatic crop farms things should be a little bit faster but at the same time uh, if you let your villager throw everything in the composter you're going to have a problem farmer villagers will also now share wheat with other farmer villagers to craft bread and the last thing that we'll be going over in today's video has to do with fishing. Fishing mechanics have been slightly adjusted yet again. A fishing location is now considered to be open water. If the fishing hook is in water, there are no blocks besides lily pads above the water, and all blocks are source blocks with no solid underwater blocks around. Uh, yeah, if you haven't heard, last week's snapshot made AFK fishing a lot more complex. At least if you're looking for loot that is actually good. But, Elites, aside from some technical changes that were made to the Jigsaw block in the snapshot, that's actually just about it for the 20W13A snapshot. So, what do you think about the Strider? Definitely let me know down in the comments below. Are you getting those scary stories to tell in the dark vibe? I, I don't know. Is, is that just me? <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Drop a like. And if you have not subscribed yet, change that now. Press that subscribe button. And don't forget about tapping the bell. Turn notifications on. I post a video every single day. You won't want to miss them. Today, I'll go ahead and leave my snapshot playlist on the end slide. If you missed a previous snapshot, check out the playlist. That's the place for you. Today, I'd like to send a big shout out to my patron, Laura H. Thank you very much for your support. Until next time, elites, stay cool. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Goodbye.